first on the Western Slope. You're watching KREX 5 News at 10 p.m. Good evening and thanks for watching KREX 5 News at 10. I'm John Madden. The Colorado State Patrol has released the identity of a man who fled from law enforcement after driving a suspected stolen vehicle and then jumping into the Colorado River. The suspect is 33 year old Tyson Bratcher of Grand Junction. Bratcher was initially pulled over from a couple report every drunk driver immediately calls and law enforcement also noticed the vehicle he was driving matched a previously reported stolen vehicle. Once pulled over near the Beck Canyon, he fled the scene in the vehicle, then fled on foot and jumped into the Colorado River. Shortly after, however, he was taken into custody. He's currently being held in the Mesa County Jail and has been charged with resisting arrest, reckless driving, among other charges. Well, it may have been another hot summer day. People from the Grand Valley got to enjoy some music and water activities while being educated about the importance of the Colorado River. KRX 5 News reporter Camila Barco spoke with organizers of the Colorado River Fest and found out more about this event. It's the sound of bongo drums, sunbathing the Colorado rays, and sliding into summer that's captured hundreds of people to come out to the first annual Colorado River Fest. It was an idea that four community members had, uh, myself and three others, and we came together with this idea and planned a festival um, to celebrate the rivers. It's a celebration that's meant to bring awareness and knowledge about the Colorado River in an interactive way. We had Rivers Edge Yoga, um, a, a bike tour, and right now, cur currently, there's a paddle going on. As well as a Colorado charity duck race that involves rubber ducks. We take the ducks down, we put them all in the river and let them float down to the finish line. It's activities like these that help showcase people how important the river is to the Grand Valley and what it has to offer. I really believe that the rivers are underutilized in our valley. We have a great resource of the rivers and, and we just don't use them enough. There's potential to, for it to be overused, so like too much water being drawn to, from it. There's um, pollution potential and taking care of it really ensures that we'll be able to live here and enjoy our lives here for a lot longer. Including community resources like the Roundup River that help keep the water healthy. They work on river cleanup and uh, the river banks and just keeping that nice and safe. Efforts, organizers and festival goers are hopeful go a long way to help the river be utilized properly. First on the Western Slope, Camila Barco, Carry X, 5 News. Camila, thank you. The proceeds from the rubber duck race will benefit Mesa County Search and Rescue. Organizers of the event said they are hopeful to continue this event in the future. A group of high school graduates spent their time before their 30 year high school reunion to give back to the community. Grand Junction High School's graduating class of 1988 spent their time this afternoon volunteering at Operation Interdependence to package boxes for troops overseas. 30 people from the graduating class came out to help the organization package about 50 boxes that are each filled with 25 care packages that aid troops during their time serving. We just wanted to, to give back and love. Uh, there's so many veterans and troops and families and it just means a lot to everybody. We love it when people want to come and help and do something like that other than our regular volunteers. It makes us feel good and it makes the guys feel good. The organization says this is the second time a graduating class has reunited to help out. Another way to help veterans, especially those locally, breaks ground. It's a new multi-million dollar project aimed at addressing many of the problems those who fought for our freedom face. It's called the Western Slope Veterans One Source Center. It will be located off 28 Road. The former Colorado National Guard Armory in Grand Junction is being redone and will be the new home for this facility. The project will cost $3.5 million and is primarily funded by the DMVA. We all want to expand the capacity to better serve our military members, veterans, and their families. And this one source will do just that. The layouts and the blueprints of the new 14,000 square foot facility were presented. The project is expected to be completed by May of next year. Looking around the region tonight, straight out of a bad date from FarmersOnly.com, a stolen John Deere tractor led police in Denver on a slow speed chase Friday evening. This happened at around 8.30 p.m. At one point, the tractor was traveling on sidewalks downtown. Several vehicles were struck and some buildings were damaged. The chase went on for about a half an hour when police decided they needed to stop the driver to protect the public as they rammed the tractor with a police car. One man described what he saw when police finally stopped the tractor. 
we like were watching it and this tree was in the way right behind you and there's like a tractor just right behind it and thump it's just hard it like just shook and you felt it and uh and then yeah and then there was just suddenly like 20 cop cars like behind and then just like swarm from all directions the driver was pulled from the tractor and tased and had to be hospitalized after it was over Two police officers were also taken to the hospital for treatment, but are expected to be okay. One woman was killed after an armed man barricaded himself inside a Trader Joe's in Silver Lake, California. Mayor Eric Garcetti said Saturday at a news conference held after the suspect surrendered to police. Police believe the man shot and killed his grandmother and girlfriend, then took 20 hostages inside the store. According to police, the suspect barricaded himself inside the store following a pursuit in a stolen Toyota Camry. That suspect is now in custody. All 17 victims of the fatal duck boat incident at a lake near Branson, Missouri, have been identified, and survivors are describing the tragic events. Camila Bernal has more. All 17 victims have been identified and now one of the survivors is speaking out. That woman that lost nine members of her family, including three of her children and her husband, she describes what she thought would be the end. I lost control. I didn't have anybody with me. I couldn't see anybody. And I know it wasn't, but it felt like I struggled for, it felt like I struggled for at least an hour. We're learning more about the final moments of the Ride the Ducks amphibious tour boat that sank Thursday near Branson, Missouri, killing 17 of the 31 people on board, including nine members of the Coleman family from Indiana, ranging from ages 1 to 76 years old. It's definitely life-changing. Tia Coleman says there were life jackets on board, but the passengers were never told to put them on. I thought that at some point he would say, grab the jackets now. But we were told to stay seated. When that, when that boat is found, all those life jackets are going to be on there because nobody pulled one off. Local authorities and investigators say they didn't yet know if anyone was wearing a life jacket. The NTSB is on the ground and looking into the incident, which happened around 7 p.m. local time Thursday when a massive storm hit the area, spawning 60 mile per hour wind gusts and strong waves. We're working to interview the survivors and the witnesses to gather physical evidence, particularly perishable evidence. We'll be taking some evidence back with us to Washington, D.C. for further examination. And investigators also saying that they do expect a preliminary report in the coming weeks, but a full report can take about a year. Reporting in Branson, Missouri, I'm Camila Burnell. Definitely a tragic story, Camila. Thank you. Well, so to come on Carrick's 5 News at 10, hear about one IT guy who is getting requests to kill people and how he is saving lives doing so. We're back in just 60 seconds.